Today we're going to look at disassembling the dash in a Crown Victoria or Grand Marquis. So this is going to do a couple of things for the people who are looking to just do a heater core uh, or blend door actuator. You don't need to take off pretty much anything in the front. So I'm going to do a complete dash disassembly so we can see it. But if you are just doing a blend door or a heater core, uh, you don't have to take the airbag out or the glove box uh, or the, any of the front trim pieces. Uh, except for on the top uh, because there's a couple of pieces in there. So let's get started, but just understand that if you are only trying to do a heater core or blend door actuator, you don't have to disassemble the entire dash. So uh, you'll notice starting here, the car is already missing its stereo and the slide out cup holder. Both of those things do not have to come out unless you are doing a complete dash disassembly, uh, but you can remove the dashboard completely from the vehicle with both of those things still installed. The big picture of taking out one of these dashboards is taking stuff off until the dashboard moves and then finding out what you haven't disconnected yet. So uh, a, that's kind of the theme of doing this job. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to take off up here is this trim piece uh, up front. Um, there's also these little things that pop out. I just pop them out as I can. This trim piece has to come out uh, no matter what you're doing uh, behind the dash because there are three seven millimeter screws under here that you need to get out to remove the dashboard uh, from the front wall. So that just pops out. There's no tools required. If the vehicle has uh, automatic headlights or automatic temperature control, you have to unplug this thing. And if you have an older car uh, where the sun load meter is over on the other side, you'll have to unplug on that side too. Use a little screwdriver here. Sometimes these little clips can be hard to push when they're in a funky position. So this is just a push release. And it comes out. This has a little bit of insulation on it. I don't know what I pulled out didn't, but definitely a bunch of all the trim. And they're all the same. So if you have to pull out a seven millimeter, they all look like this. You don't need to sort them. Uh, you can just put them in a tray. And then put them back uh, as you reinstall. And the other ones over there, I'll have to walk around to the other side. Uh, this trim piece right here just pops right off. There's no tools required. And then the connectors behind it also have the little push tab things that my fat fingers sometimes struggle to get. So you can use a screwdriver to depress the tab and then pull the connector out. And you have your trim piece. Uh, this headlight switch. Uh, they look different throughout the different years, uh, but they come out the same way. You just pry out. And no matter if you're doing a dash disassembly or a complete or dash removal for a heater core job, this part has to come out because there is the nut behind here that we're going to have to reach. So this pops out like that. And then you press your connectors and pull your headlight switch off. It looks like it's actually in pretty good shape too. Okay, there's a nut in here that has to come off. Now this nut, we'll talk about this uh, a little bit later too. This nut, you don't have to back all the way off and take it off if you're just doing a heater core job because the heater cords over on that side, you pull this nut out, back it out a little bit, but keep it on there. And then this stud that that nut is on becomes the pivot point for pivoting the dash. So we'll, when we get to that point, we'll uh, show you that. All right, these kick plates on the bottom, both on the driver and passenger side, uh, just pop right out. Uh, you might, depending uh, on what it looks like under there, you might have to pull these sill plates, the sill plate out, pull uh, the weather stripping off a little bit, and then you're just held on by a couple of Christmas trees. And there you go, that's out. So that's out. Uh, under here is a seven millimeter uh, that holds the does two things. It holds the parking brake release in place and then it also holds on this trim piece that's under the steering column. And under this trim piece is a crash plate uh, that we're also going to take off and it'll allow you to have easy access uh, to that one nut that I was talking about. All right. 
So again, another seven millimeter, the exact same as the ones that are coming out of there. So just throw that in a tray and then this piece just comes right off. Now on some cars, there is another seven millimeter on this other side. Uh, on my 2011, there is not, it is just a Christmas tree. So check to make sure you uh, are looking at the all the pieces of it so you don't accidentally break this trim piece trying to get it out uh, because you didn't pull out one of the screws. All right, so the plastic piece comes off. This is held on by 10 millimeters. I think there's five of them, if I remember correctly. So I pull out my handy dandy 10 millimeter. And back these out. These sockets that I have have magnets in them. They're super helpful when you're trying to take something out of a small space because uh, the screw will stay in there and it'll stay in there pretty well. It only catches if you're trying to do it quickly and drop them. Won't do that, so small price to play. Take this crash plate out and now we have a direct line to this this uh, nut that's in here. Now I'm not going to grab the camera because I, I just won't be able to do it one-handed. Uh, but as soon as you take the headlight switch out, you can see the nut. It's a 13 millimeter, I think. Uh, we'll see when we get to it. Uh, you can see it from here. It's the only one you can see. You can't mess it up. It's, it's the only one you can see. And then from here, you can get to it with a straight extension. You don't even need um, a joint. The dash is basically held in by about uh, five bolts, I'd say, maybe seven. Because you have this one here, this nut here. There's two 13s down here on the transmission tunnel. And then there's one or two on the other side. It's like a 10 or 11. I don't remember. We'll, I'll see when we get to it. Uh, and then that's it. And you got the three across the top. And then that's basically it. And the dash will come out from there. Uh, now, if you want to completely remove the dash, you have to start undoing electrical connectors. And we'll get to that because there's some things I want to I want to take out of this car. There's this trim piece here. It's just held in by a Christmas tree. Just take it out. I hate these trees. I mean, they're handy because they maybe 13. Now there's actually four of these nuts. There's two of them up right underneath and two of them down here. Um, well, there's two nuts and then two bolts. You know what? I'm going to take them both out because I can't remember off the top of my head if you only need to take one side or the other. So let's just go ahead and back them all out. So to take this dash piece off, you just get your fingers under here and pull it out gently, and then start working it out as you work your way across, and that comes out, and that's it. And then for the uh, rear defogger, there's another one of these little things to depress, and then that comes out. So that piece is off, and then you'll see there's a bunch of seven millimeters along here. Uh, that we're going to take out uh, so you can take out the airbag you can take out this vent duct uh, and then we'll be able to take out the instrument cluster so again don't have to do any of this stuff if you're just pulling the dash for the heater core so there's two sevens under here drop these all right and then push the sides in to Release those things, and there's your golf box. That's it. Okay, to take the airbag out, there are two sevens right here, and then under, and we get our two eights up here. Holding the airbag in. Okay, those are out. And your airbag just comes right out. And then there's a connector back here. It just pulls out, and there's your airbag. All done. Out. It's another set. 
this just moves right on out. And that's it. Just so once again, you can just kind of disassemble all this stuff pretty easily. Now the heater core is right here, and then the blend door actually is right behind it. So one of the ways to get to the heater core is to pull the airbag. Uh, pulling the airbag is pretty easy. It's getting to the blend door actuator is the pain in the ass because uh, you ha basically have to ha be have really tiny hands, and I can kind of feel it here, and then you have to screw with this duct. It's just a huge pain in the ass. Honestly, I would rather just pull the whole dash because remember, if you're just pulling the whole dash, none of this stuff has to happen. Let's keep moving along here. I'll get the seven here on this side. Again, just throw these all in the same spray, and you're done. Come on. They're moving cars around here right now. They're giant forklifts, so I apologize for the noise if it's kind of loud in the background. Uh, so this is the climate control. Now, if you, this is the automatic climate control module. The manual one and the automatic both bolt the exact same way. So it doesn't matter which one you have, it's going to come out the same way. The connectors are different in the back, but they're still going to disconnect uh, the same way as the general, your standard Ford connectors do. So you pull this piece out, and then you have, there we go, there's one. This. Take a little flathead and then push that down. Well, clean out. And that comes off. This thing probably hasn't been disconnected in 20 years. Okay, and then for the vacuum lines, I just do this by hand so you don't break it. Um, there's little, two little 10 millimeter nuts on here that go onto this plastic part, and that's what holds your vacuum lines on. Now, if you have the manual temperature control, you're still gonna have the same exact piece. It'll just potentially look a little different, but how you remove it's the same. So this has been replaced before, because this is a Dorman uh, module. This is not a Ford module. This. Right here is still a seven millimeter, just looks different. Uh, this is what holds the hose for the interior temperature. So this is part of the automatic climate control. If you don't have automatic climate control, this won't be here. That's what this white hose is uh, that's in here, if you can see that. There are two seven millimeters up here holding the instrument cluster in. So you just want to make sure both of those out. Again, they're the same as the other seven millimeters, so just throw them in your tray. Now the shift cable is a, literally a cable that goes from the shifter arm to the indicator in the instrument cluster. It is literally just a little tiny fishing line sized cable. And a pulley. Not much to it. Okay, so this is ready to pop free. So that's out. And again, if you have the radio here, no big deal. Um, you don't actually have to pull the radio. Uh, you just pull this out and then um, undo your radio. Now, so the funny thing is, just as an aside, uh, when they talk about if you put in aftermarket radios in these and use a double pin, it tells you once you install that adapter, you have to pull the dash to get the radio out. That's not true. All you got to do is pull this piece off and then the radio will come with it. So, uh, pull this piece off, and then let's get this out of the way. And then now uh, you got all this space here, uh, access to all of this. Um, taking out the instrument cluster uh, is again, you guessed it, more seven millimeters. There's some small little Torx bit ones on there. You do not need to remove those to remove the instrument cluster. You just need to remove these four seven millimeter. Reels. The rest are for the cover, like the plastic cover and to the back flame. Uh, you don't need to take those out until you're actually taking the instrument cluster apart. I think you can actually finagle. There's a spider inside this thing. 
you can finagle this thing out without taking the steering column cover off. Uh, but in the interest of completeness, uh, I'm gonna take this off. Now on a, on a newer car, uh, like my 2011, there's three five and a half millimeter screws that are holding the steering column cover. Uh, in an older car like this, this is a 2003, uh, it's probably Phillips screws. I think it is. So, skinny. So I'll just use a skinny little screwdriver and get in there and undo these three Phillips screws. As in another aside on a newer car you don't have to take those three five and a half millimeter screws out to take the top cover off so if you're taking the top of the steering column cover off on a newer car where it's got the three and a half millimeter i'm sorry the five and a half millimeter screws you can just stick a screwdriver a flathead in the top and you can pop the top cover off there's a fourth phillips screw on the side over here on the right side on the older models so if you have phillips screws in yours, there's four. If you have five and a half millimeter screws, there's three. All right, Oops. let's just pull that off so now it's gone. All right, now the cable that's attached to the instrument cluster goes around the bottom of the steering column and then up into there. There's a, I believe it's a five and a half millimeter over here. Okay. All right, so to get the top cover off, now in a newer car, you don't have to pop this, this uh, plastic cover off the ignition switch. Uh, if there's a rubber boot in there that you just pull off. So, all right, pull that out. This off of here. Okay, now that plastic cover's off. Okay. And depending on your year, it's going to change what um, connectors you have. So it's nearly impossible to see, but that little cable, it's under here, and once you take this piece off, you grab a hold of it, and there's a little loop up here, and you pull it off of that loop, and that's the mechanism that the column shifter is attached to, and then you'll be able to take this out. Clearly, I've done this very many times. I'm not very proficient at it. Uh, newer model cars, the connector is going to be, there's one on the side, up here, uh, this one is right here. So I'm turning this so I can get my screwdriver in there and get that unplugged. That's out. And then we'll get the other connector. And then with my handy screwdriver, push. Okay, so now that I have it out, I can kind of show you. This is the shifter cable, and it's just this little tiny wire that's on a pulley that goes from this arm in here up into the uh, instrument cluster. So you see if I pull on this thing, it changes where that indicator is. Okay, so there's your instrument cluster. All right, so there's four of those 13 millimeter nuts. And I highly recommend if you're gonna drop the dash, uh, do this early. Because once the steering, once the dash becomes mobile, you get these last two. So there's two up front and two in the back. These four 13 millimeter nuts will allow you to disassociate the steering column with the dashboard. So you don't have to drop the entire column, you can if you want. So on this side, I'm going to take off this larger, is it 15? Yep, so 15 millimeter on this side. And remember, I already took off the four 13 millimeters there. So a 15. Yep. And again, you don't have to take this all the way off. You just back it out. Let's go ahead and grab this seven millimeter on top. As I said, I didn't forget it, but 
will if I say I didn't forget it and then don't do it. Alright. Uh, big long extensions is the name of the game. These. This is way too long. I just so that's out. Again, same seven millimeter that you find all over the place. So first I'm gonna pop this silk plate up. Now, when you swing out the dash, you have to take these off, and I think these are tens. At some point, the thing is with the, these cars, while they're similar, some of some things aren't the same. So these might not be tens on every. They're tens on this one. Those off. There's a bunch of connectors down here. Disconnect those. If you have a P71, there's uh, some extra connectors down here. So if it's a connect, it's connected wire, and it looks like it is going to be in the way, you pulling the dashboard off. Oh, this way. All right, some junk in here. Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, down here is this is either a 10 or an 11 millimeter. I think it's different than different mirrors. This car is a 10. There's uh, an electrical connector down here that also has a 10 millimeter. Uh, it's the only one that's got a 10 millimeter, so let's pull that off. Now, there's this electrical connector right here. This is the one with the 10 millimeter holding it in. And here is the radio antenna. Unplug that. Okay. All right, so it's off. Okay, so just to kind of recap a little bit. All of this crap doesn't have to happen if you're just pulling the dash to do your here core um, or your blend door actuator, okay? So this stuff can all stay complete. So all you're doing, if you're doing those two things, you're gonna pull the two 15s over there, but leave that 15 threaded a little bit uh, on the top. You're gonna do the two 13s that are down here. You're gonna do the four uh, what is it? I want to say they were 13 or 14s that are holding the steering wheel to the dashboard. And then you're going to do uh, the 10 millimeter over here, uh, plus all the electrical connectors. Pull this out. Okay. Now, this is enough right here. I don't have to do anything else. I can get to the heater core from here. Uh, so I'm going to move the camera, and then we'll, I'll show you that part. So again, taking all this crap off is just for fun. We didn't need to do that. Here you can see the gap uh, that's left by that HVAC module, and then all the stuff in there. Um, so as you can see, you can it's without doing all pulling all this extra junk out of here. Um, it really doesn't take that long to pull the dash off far enough to get to your module and your blend door actuator and all the junk inside of there. So um, when you put it back, obviously assembly is the opposite of disassembly. You're just gonna effectively swing it back into place like that, right? Connect all your stuff and put it back together. So remember all this crap that I pulled out does not need to come out uh, for doing your heater core. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys how to take apart the whole thing uh, if you wanted to. And if you wanna take the whole thing out, like completely remove this, the only steps I didn't do is you're gonna finish removing that nut over there and then there's a ton of Christmas trees with all this electrical wiring in it. You just gotta unclip those and then you'll be able to separate the wiring harness from the dashboard. And that's it, so let me know if you guys have any questions uh, and good luck.